All right, welcome back everybody. As you can see, a lot has changed. I finally got moved into my new place and uh, it took a long time and there was a big dry spell in brewing, but thank goodness it's finally finished. And uh, I'm very happy, very satisfied where I am. There's a lot to offer in this place and uh, a whole lot that I'm very happy about. I also have new equipment here and here, and we're gonna go over all this in the video. Um, and then lastly, I also wanted to talk about 2019, brew year 19, uh, what goals we're gonna have for that, what kinds of things I wanna brew, what kinds of directions I wanna take my brewing in. Uh, so hopefully all of you enjoy following along with that. It is December 8th, 2018 at the moment, and I have one minute until kickoff of the Army Navy game. And I wanna say one thing, and that is beat Navy. All right, so this place is great, but um, one thing that is a drawback is that this stove is probably one of the oldest stoves that I think I've ever seen. It might be from like 1980, and that might not be an exaggeration. It's got like analog timers, and everything's analog. Um, so, uh, it's old, and it works fine, but um, the largest burner elements on here, unfortunately, cannot actually bring my, uh, my kettle um, to a rolling boil, which is obviously a major issue in brewing, because then we're going to have tons of off flavors if we can't get a good boil. So I had to look for ways to boil the beer uh, that weren't just going to be um, on the stove. So, all right, so there's a couple options on ways to boil the kettle. One, I could do propane, um, but I'm renting right now and there is a clause in my lease that prevents me from having grills, open flames, anything like that on the deck. So that was out. Obviously I can't do that inside, that's dangerous, you'll kill yourself. Um, so I, the other option I thought was, hey. What about an induction burner or a simple stovetop burner? So, issue with that, I can't actually run an effective wattage without a uh, 240 volt electric outlet, which don't have in here unless I wanted to pull the stove out, so that wasn't going to happen. And I can't run it from my dryer outlet because at that point it gets to be too long of a cord and that's a fire hazard. Plus, I'm not actually that good with wiring, so I don't even trust myself. So, I was down to the last option, which was this. This right here is a heat stick. This right here is an element. Uh, this is a 1650 watt uh, electric element. And this cable right here plugs into a GFCI outlet. If you do get this, make sure you do put it into a GFCI, otherwise you can kill yourself. Because should water get in here and um, basically carry a current the second you touch the metal pot, and you'll ground yourself and die but the GFCI allows you to do that safely, should there be an issue, which likely there won't be if you set this up correctly. This heat stick is from brewhardware.com. Um, I'll include a link down below to uh, see where you can get something like this. I'm not affiliated with them, so if you click the link, I don't earn any money. However, brewhardware.com, if you're watching this, um, and I wouldn't mind it, so let me know. Uh, anyway, this is called the Hot Rod. They have a 1500 watt element, a 1650 watt element, and then if your kitchen is set up with a 20 amp circuit, uh, which mine is not, you can get um, a much higher uh, wattage element. But anyway, what this happens to do uh, very well is this alone will be enough to get um, basically your mash water heated up, but when it's in combination with a burner on the stove, it's actually really, really good and brings a very strong boil into place. So. Um, just be aware that it has no switch on it, you plug it in, this thing starts heating up immediately, and it's a 1600 watt element, you really want to have that under water. Don't do it uh, dry because it will actually probably damage it. Um, so that being said, the next thing uh, that I bought, I upgraded my heating system, I figured I might as well upgrade my kettle. So I, have a black, I saw a Black Friday sale, um, Cyber Monday kind of thing on uh, Northern Brewer, so I have a new pot. So I was previously using this really lightweight stainless steel Brewer's Best uh, eight gallon kettle, and it worked just fine. It got everything done that needed to get done. Um, however, this here is the Mega Pot uh, 1.2 stainless steel kettle, 10 gallon capacity. Uh, it is, it's got this uh, three layered bottom on it, which is really good for um, transferring heat evenly, as well as a ball valve and uh, a nice thermometer as well. So, I'm loving it so far. I have to do some testing this afternoon to figure out what my boil-off rate is uh, for calculations and stuff, but so far this thing is 
it's beautiful. <laughs> it's really heavy, but having the ball valve is great. Uh, that gives me a lot of flexibility and being able to just, especially since it's a lot heavier than that kettle was, um, I can just drain from here, cool and drain, and then go right into the fermenter without having to move the kettle all over the place. So it's a big help for me. This may change, this might evolve a little bit depending on how I mess around with my brewing. So you will notice that this is a 10 gallon capacity up from the eight uh, that I was using before. And uh, well, the reason for that is next year, I think I wanna really do um, five gallon batches to start kind of upgrading that. So I needed a bigger kettle to do a bigger burn a bag mash. Um, and actually still have enough wort left over um, to sufficiently give myself five gallons. So um, the reason for that is basically because when I start giving my beer away and bringing it to like family events and things, it ends up going away very quickly. And a three gallon batch is, is gonna give you about a case and a half of beer, about 30 bottles or so. And if you're generous and give away, um, you know, a bunch of them to your friends, you get like three or four friends and you give them like three bottles a piece, then all of a sudden your beer is half gone and you know that kind of takes a toll for a while so sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more left over and be able to actually give like a whole six pack away to your friends and your family and stuff so that's driving that for me um so that's definitely one of the things i want to do next year it's going to be a little more economical as well uh buying larger amounts of ingredients but for less cost anyway you'll notice also with the ball valve here i'm thinking about maybe making a hybrid all grain setup. So I'm still doing brew in a bag, so basically that means that I'm mashing with this mesh bag in my brew kettle, pull the bag out and start to boil right there, all in the same vessel, and that's fine. Uh, and that was all driven by not having a lot of space in my previous apartment. Now that I have, you know, truthfully, about double that space, um, I actually have a little more flexibility in what I can do, and I'm thinking I might actually make this a mash ton kind of setup and actually you do like a full mash, a real all grain mash, water in here and then um, drain to a second vessel uh, using this ball valve and get a clearer wort that way. Um, it could be fun, it'd be like kind of a hybrid step between doing brew in a bag and classic all grain. All I need right now is like a hot liquor tank and, and we're good. Um, as far as having enough stuff to do a classic all grain with. Um, but for the moment, I'm gonna keep brewing brew in a bag um, and uh, we'll see if anything changes. That's kind of a what if. Also, one more thing I definitely think I wanna do is actually maybe build myself a fermentation chamber. So I have um, a little more control over the temperature in this apartment than I did in the last one. Um, it is a newer place that has better insulation, so it's finally not gonna be 60 degrees in the winter no matter what I do. Um, but that got me thinking, I have more space, I have a lower electric bill, maybe I can actually go ahead and get a small chest freezer and controller and do the whole uh, fermentation chamber thing. If I do that, I will obviously update you guys uh, at, in the process of doing that, but that's a thing that might dramatically improve my fermentation and the results of my final beer as well. Um, they're not too expensive, I can probably snag a small chest freezer that'll fit one fermenter for around $100 I think. Um, even cheaper if I find a used one. But anyway, let's talk now about what kind of beers I definitely want to hit next year. So, um, first of all, I want to perfect the wheat beer. So I've always had some issues um, using wheat malt. For some reason my efficiency goes down by like 10%. Uh, and I end up with a beer that's like a lot lighter than I was intending on, or just doesn't ferment properly and it's just annoying. Uh, it's all in the mesh and um, I need to figure out what's wrong with it and why it's happening um, But then I want to be able to brew that really good German Hefeweizen that I've just been craving uh, So that's probably gonna be one of the, the first beers that I make here um, And I kind of want to tackle like I said, I haven't had a good wheat beer in a while Second beer I want to fix uh, is the Russian Imperial Stout So this would be the second time I brew a Russian Imperial Stout I want to be able to redo the process last time I had some fermentation issues and I underpitched the yeast and we had some weird funky esters. This time I want to be able to do everything perfect and right and control the fermentation properly and then age that thing for a year. Uh, we'll see how version two turns out. So third, I want to do a coffee stout. Um, basically I do enjoy stouts quite a bit and there's a lot you can do with them. Uh, coffee stout happens to be one of my favorites. So that's just something I've been meaning to do and never really got around to. So that's going to happen this year. And uh, 
I also want to try a New England IPA. I'm in New England, I haven't brewed a New England IPA yet, and that's all the craze right now, so uh, why don't I try it? So that'll be one more thing. Lastly, I was given the book Brew Like a Monk uh, for my birthday this year. That's a really interesting book that goes really in depth on Belgian beers and it covers in extreme detail uh, how the Trappist monks brew their beer and what makes it so good. And it also has a lot of recipes in there that I would like to try, so I'm kind of thinking I might do a lot of Belgians this year as well. So we'll see. Um, I don't want to brew too much beer, but I don't know if that's really a bad thing. So we'll find out. I'll keep everybody on the channel updated as it goes. Um, so anyway, so I'm probably going to wait till the end of the year to upload this one, uh, just because it is kind of New Year's oriented, I guess. Uh, so anyway, hopefully everyone does have a good New Year. So if you enjoyed this video and uh, you enjoy watching me do what I do, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe. There's more videos coming out, usually once a week or once every couple weeks, uh, depending on how life treats me. Um, but I try to be consistent if I can. If you got any comments, let me know. As long as they are civil, drop them down below. And uh, I will catch you in the next one. So, cheers.